A pilgrim visiting the Archbasilica of St. John Lateran in Rome cannot help but discern the presence of the apostles. The powerfully dramatic statues of the twelve apostles and the twelve niches of the nave of the church, symbolizing the twelve gates of the eternal Jerusalem, contribute to this overwhelming sense. The sculpture of St. Jude Thaddeus represents him in motion, carrying a spear, sometimes associated with his own passion and death. His face is full at once of conviction and of longing. His hand is displayed in a gesture of explanation or pleading. This statue and the other 11 represent not only the historical figures, but speak to a present reality. The saints, most especially the apostles, are present and active in the church today. Just as God acted in their life on earth, so he continues to act through their patronage in heaven. The first choice of the preface of the apostles in the Roman Missal states, For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. Outside of the list of the apostles in the Gospels, not much is said about St. Jude. Yet, at the Last Supper in the Gospel of John, our Lord and St. Jude have a brief dialogue. The evangelist writes, Judas, not the Iscariot, said to him, Master, what happened that you will not reveal yourself to the world, but only to us? Jesus answers, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. The question of St. Jude 2,000 years ago could equally be our own in these times. Why does God not show himself as Lord to the whole world? Why is he not more present to us in our needs? Pope Benedict XVI addresses this point in his series of talks on the apostles. He says, the risen one must be seen, must be perceived also by the heart in a way so that God may take up his abode within us. He desires to enter our lives, and therefore his manifestation is a manifestation that implies and presupposes an open heart. It is often stated that St. Jude became the patron of impossible cases because, having a similar name to the traitor Judas Iscariot, he was forgotten and not prayed to for so long. Finally, when Christians did seek his intercession, a floodgate of graces was opened. However, I would propose that the reason he is the patron of impossible cases is because of his dialogue with the Lord at the Last Supper. When we find ourselves with heavy hearts, in a desperate situation, and we come to realize that only God can help us, we reach out to him through the intercession of St. Jude. And sometimes, for the first time in a long while, our hearts are open to the mystery of the grace of God and the power of his presence. In seeking an answer to prayer, in seeking the friendship of the Apostle Jude, we discover something even greater, salvation in Christ. St. Jude has widespread popularity around the world. He belongs to no particular culture, nation, or people. A devotion to St. Jude or any saint is seen not as an obstacle to Christ, but as a concrete path of the Lord. Devotions, in fact, are just that, concrete and practical ways that draw us into the mystery of the love of God. The Apostle Jude is a loving and accessible patron who has compassion on the devotee in his need, but is also still the Apostle who proclaims the risen Christ to those who seek his aid. St. Jude is then for us a heavenly intercessor for the needs of this world, and a beacon of hope that we too can find life eternal in Christ Jesus our Lord. Brothers and sisters, keep studying. This is Father Vincent Kelber for the Western Dominican Province. <laughs>